Hi, my name is John Smith with ExtraHop Networks. Uh, today I want to talk about a little uh, ExtraHop integration I put together over the weekend where um, I basically use the RevealX Discover platform to take DNS lookups that have either COVID or Corona in them and I check the IPs that are returned against the Open Threat Exchange API. Um, so if you look here, you'll see from the COVID Cyber Threat Coalition uh, and I want to call out Zen Data GE. I don't know their real name, but they've done a pretty good job of keeping a list of malicious COVID and coronavirus domains. So if you look here at this particular uh, set of indicators, uh, 30,000 of them are domains and, and uh, three, almost 3,100 of them are host names. Point being around 33,000 DNS names are malicious or have IOCs associated with them uh, around malicious behavior. That's staggering number. In fact, there's a really interesting post from, let me call his name out. He was really, uh, really poignant. Uh, someone from Risk IQ named Brandon Dixon. And what he basically said was, hey, maybe we need to start whitelisting COVID and Corona names because there's just so many bad ones. That gave me the idea to check and just see, hey, just how many bad ones are there? And I found some pretty staggering results here. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to take these DNS, uh, DNS queries that we run. And the reason I'm using DNS is that it encompasses any protocol, right? Because in this case, the, the malware or the, the, um, the trick that they're trying to play on you involves a name. So I'm going to try to leverage DNS since it uses a name. And I'm going to basically take the IP addresses that are returned from a DNS query and check them against the Open Threat Exchange API. Real quick, I want to thank AT&T uh, Cybersecurity Services for making Alien Vault available. I've had an API key for years. So here you can see you've got an API key. Once you sign up and, and basically you can see here, this is the format you use. Uh, what we'll do on the Extra Hot platform is we will remove all of the quotes and we'll come over here to our um, to our open data stream client. And this is what I'm going to use to call out. So when I observe a DNS query with COVID or Corona in it, I'm going to call out an open data stream, which is an API call to get access to, to find out, hey, is this does this IP yet? IP address have any sort of dossier from your platform. So here you'll set it up. And if you look here in the additional HTTP header, this is where you'll put your API key. You can also call it out in the trigger. I prefer to put it in there. That way it's not, uh, it's not visible in the trigger. And just a quick walkthrough of what this looks like. So here, um, you can also, if DNS is too noisy, you can use specific protocols. Just, it's just that DNS encompasses so many protocols that, um, that, that I prefer to use it in this case. Also, we're filtering for COVID and, and Corona, so it should be relatively easy both on you and on, on Open Thread Exchange's API. So here, if you look, I'm doing a uh, regular expression match, case insensitive. I see a lot of solutions sort of capitalize something in the middle of a, of a word to try to evade, you know, some um, application firewalls and IDSs and IPSs. We're using JavaScript. That gives us the full complement of, of uh, regex. You're not going to be able to hide from regex. So we're doing a case ins insensitive match on COVID and Corona. And then we're looking at the DNS addresses that are actually returned. And we're checking them against Alien Vault's Open Thread Exchange API. Uh, so let's just take a look and see what that looks like, right? So again, we're doing a, a lookup. We're checking the IP addresses for any DNS query that has COVID or Corona in it. So let's just do a quick NS lookup. And this literally got ridicu ridiculous yesterday. I looked up, I think, Corona Relief coronamask.com, COVID mask, any, I mean, it was literally like seven out of 10 had some sort of OTX dossier associated with them. So let's take a look at covid19.com, right? That should definitely be legit. So, and let's look up covid19.com. And this is going to return three IP addresses. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to take the three IP addresses that were returned. And keep in mind in the debug window, it's not gonna be exactly in chronological order, so I'm gonna jump around a little bit once the results come in. But basically, we're gonna do 
uh, we're going to check each and every one of these IP addresses that were returned, and we're going to ask Alien Vault, hey, do you have any matches for these? So let's look at the three uh, matches for COVID-19. The first one here, um, we have um, COVID19.com on the 34.202 first two octets. Um, we don't have any antivirus matches, right? So you see uh, AVG has none, Avast has none, Clam AV and MS Defender doesn't, but the count is five, right? So that means that there, this particular IP address has had five instances where there was some sort of IOC associated uh, with OTX. Now the second one, on the other hand, definitely has four uh, IOCs associated with it. But if you look here, you'll see that it has actually had a a, um, a uh, Win32 CryptoX-Gen Trojan uh, that's been associated. Also, if we scroll to the right just a little bit, you'll see also uh, some Predator malware and another um, Trojan associated with it from MS Defender. So again, this one, whoops, sorry, it will go back. So this particular, uh, the COVID19.com has definitely got some malware associated with it. And the, then you see the final one, 52.0.7.30, it actually has a similar Trojan associated with it as well. So, so I'm inclined to believe that all three of these IP addresses have something lying in wait, whether it's, you know, and I don't care what the protocol is, whether it's HTTP, SSL, SMTP, FTP. The point is, is that the IP address that's associated with this name has some nefarious history associated with it. Some of it may be in the past, some of it rather acute and immediate. So that's very important. And again, keep in mind, it's this egregious using the free, you know, the open source version of Open Thread Exchange. You may use something like Recorded Future, CrowdStrike, something like that. That will also, we can also, anything that can that can work with either Taxi uh, and Stix files, or if it supports a REST API, we can integrate with it. So let's look at coronavirus. For sure, that's got to be a legitimate one, right? So I'm going to do an NS lookup, coronavirus.com, right? So let's just see what this says. So we see three IPs again. Um, I've become somewhat of a first octet bigot, uh, if you will, right? When I see 185, you know, I start to get suspicious. If I see five dot, I get suspicious. 162 is another one that I occasionally see uh, being malicious. 23, a lot of those are Akamai, but, you know, Akamai can't police every single uh, piece of content. So sometimes those are, and I'm not saying this is Akamai, um, but, you know, you sort of, if when you look at threat intelligence long enough, you kind of get an idea that some first octets become pretty, you know, pretty consistent with with threat intelligence matches. So this should come back here in a minute. Oh, actually, it's back now. So now let's take a look. This 162, 242, 150, 89 uh, has 25 instances of having had a um, having had malicious data. And if we look here, we do see that it's had another Windows uh, Trojan dropper right there, right? So also scrolling down, we see QuakeBot. We see another Win32 malware gen. Sorry for the mouse moving. I just want to point them out for you. I know that can be annoying in a video, but here you'll see some. Then if we scroll to the right, there you'll see a few uh, uh, Razy ransomware, Tesla Crypt. So a couple of things I look for when I'm matching up with OTX, even if all of the antivirus uh, scanners come up null, keep in mind the count, right? We've seen instances where something has, you know, an IOC count of like 2,500 IOCs have been associated with a particular IP address. There are certain CIDR blocks that make up the internet's red light district, and they certainly show themselves when you're matching them up with, with threat intelligence. So here again, what we're doing, uh, we don't want to, obviously you can't hammer your OTX API with API calls, um, but when you filter it with things like, I want to see the DNS uh, IP matches for Corona and COVID, that's a manageable amount and, and your cyber threat intelligence is only as good as the metrics that you can match it up with, whether that's SIM, syslogs, you know, whether that's firewall logs, but there's no substitute for taking d data directly off the wire. If you notice here, this is a, there's a 30 second wait here while the UI refreshes. But in this case, like if we integrated this with some of our CrowdStrike integration where we can contain 
a put a put a host in containment if we observe something that happens in milliseconds. So let's take an instance of this QuakeBot. Um, if if someone did a DNS lookup, and one of the benefits of catching something at DNS is that you can literally respond before the transaction can be complete. So we have a DNS uh, IP returned that is malicious. You, you can actually issue the CrowdStrike API to quarantine or put the box in containment before they can even download the payload. My point being is the 30 seconds you wait for the UI, what happens under the hood in terms of an API call, that happens within milliseconds. So literally you would be able to quarantine these devices before they even got the payload downloaded. Again, this is John Smith with Extra Hop Networks, and this is an example of leveraging the RevealX surveillance platform with any REST capable threat intelligence, cyber threat intelligence feed. Thanks so much for listening.